I delete and add sphere. Right now it's 6,146 vertices. So those are just the shapes that the sphere is made up of, especially the surface. The, the surface is what we refer to as topology. So let's turn on the wireframe down here. So the wireframe will just show the topology of the sphere. And you can see it's made up, it's pretty clean. It's made up of little squares. If we were to raise, oops, how did I do that? How did I, how did I get a shortcut to a mat cap? I'm so confused. How do I even do that? Oh well, anyway. Where did my sphere just go? Did I undo? Oh, I must have un undid by accident. So the higher your resolution is, which means the higher that all of these little squares, the, like, this square will break into four squares. Let's see, so if we voxel remesh this, see those little squares getting smaller? If we voxel remesh it, now there's more squares. But you can still see how it's not very clean and the resolution is very, very high. So I'm going to undo, and now we're back to our regular sphere. So let's validate. For some reason, the, the weights in the grays are different, so it looks a little bit different, but it's the same. Okay, so we know that topology is the surface, and we can see each of the surface squares that make up this sphere. So why is quad remesher cool? Uh, to show it a little bit better, let's trim this, and let's just trim it. So now this is all pretty clean, but you can see around the edges, it's not very clean. <laughs> It's quite ugly. Now we have smooth shading on, which makes this look somewhat smooth. But let's see what it looks like if we turn smooth shading off. It'll look like this. That's why sometimes if you have smooth shading off, everything looks blocky or pixelated. Because you're seeing, oops, you're seeing the wireframe, you're seeing the topology. Now smooth shading just hides it, it kind of makes everything look smooth. So this is the topology of our sphere. It's fine, you know, if you don't, if you're not using the wireframe, if you're just sculpting, it's not a big deal. So if you're on Android, it's not that big of a deal, especially if you're just doing sculpts uh, to make them look cool. I've been using it for a long time before I had quad remesher, and you can really make cool sculpts. So I think the best way to explain the difference between remeshing and quad remesher. Right now it's 5,661. We can see the topology. So let's voxel remesh at 160. So we'll remesh it. It looks cleaner, but all the squares are smaller. And also, you can see that they're just not, they're not very clean, they're not very consistent. Let's see it without the wireframe, see it looks smoother. But once you can see the topology, then you can see that the squares are a lot smaller and the number is a lot higher. So that's not very efficient. We'll just go back to the regular sphere. But now let's quad remesh it. So we'll tap quad remesher and we'll just do same. So with same, it's not going to recalculate as far as resolution goes. So this number is not going to change. It's going to keep it the same. It's just going to reorganize the topology. So it's going to reorganize all of these squares and triangles. So let's hit same. And now everything is reorganized and it looks a lot cleaner. If I turn the wireframe off, you can see it's still smooth. Let's turn smooth shading off. Uh, you can see the topology, but that's still very clean. And if we turn the wireframe off, uh, what's more important is this is nice and clean and straight. So this doesn't make that much of a difference right in Nomad. If you're just making cool things, it's fine. But uh, the reason why I use it a lot is once I see one versus the other, uh, I do just, I would prefer my sculpt to be, to have a clean. So if you're on Android and you don't have quad remesher, it's perfectly fine, it's okay. You'll be able to sculpt really great things in Nomad. And once I started to pay attention to topology, I just like it to be as clean as it can be. Another reason is I like to export my sculpts over to different programs. I use Blender a lot. And when you're using other programs, the topology does matter. There's lots of things that you're doing with the sculpt 
and the topology does make a huge difference. For example, let's say this was a tire. Uh, it's important that this edge breaks in a nice smooth manner. Uh, if I wanted to lay, if I wanted to put a material on, it might go great because everything is going in the same direction. So the material will go on cleaner and then there's a clean break here. I mean, that's just a, an example of different ways that topology does make a difference in other programs. I'm sure it does make a, a difference in Nomad as well, but you can get away with a lot as long as you're not looking at the wireframe. And uh, if you have smooth shading on, of course, uh, it looks perfectly fine. And another thing that I do in Quad Remesher is obviously you can adjust these. So if this was just a really small uh, part of something else, like part of a robot or something, it doesn't need to be 5,000. The resolution doesn't have to be that high. If it was really small, I could take this and hit half and it will cut it in half. And you can see if I turn the wireframe off, these were all bigger. I could go half again. Right now it's 783. So if this was something really small, I might just do this. I might just make it really tiny. Uh, maybe I'll do half again and make it even smaller, 302. So if I was making a robot with a hundred of these, it's better to have a hundred of them that are at 300 or you know maybe even 132 if it looks fine, rather than having them at 5,000, your project's gonna, just gonna be huge. Uh, so those are some of the ways that I use quad remesher. Uh, that's why I use quad remesher. Of course, if you zoom in, you're just seeing the topology squares. Hope this helped or shed some light on why, you know, people are talking about it or people are using it or just shed some light on topology in general. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video and happy new year.